Oh, I didn't click on that thing. Alrighty, let's click. What is going on? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right there. Let me get this. What's good? Hey everybody, if anybody's here, um, just setting up, as usual. Okay, let's move you out. I need more room. Large enough desk, but you would think I would have enough room, but I don't. Hey, Kui Miko. How are you? Hey, Crojo. Let's get that can go right in there. Oh, yes, me. Why am I yawning? Be here. Oh, sorry. Make certain I got my correct windows up and running. Yay! What are you working on? Yeah, Norfarian, I mentioned that. Okay. Gotcha. We're going to switch on over. So, last week, remember, I didn't stream last Sunday, but then Tuesday or whatever, I was going to either do temperature blanket or the shawl, and I decided not to do the temperature blanket. So off stream, I did la the previous week's rose. We got some yellow in here. We got some yellow. We had a 70 degree day that week. So now I'm doing this previous week. So we're back, we're back on track. Yes, we have yellow. And yesterday's high was 75. So... We got, um, more yellow. <laughs> yes. No more white. No more white. <laughs> hey, Grammy. Okay. So, we're gonna... It's starting to get... It's about a quarter of the way done, and it's starting to get a little, uh... Cumbersome. I'm like, I'm only a quarter of the way done. Why didn't hallelujah work? H-A-L-L-E-L-U-J-A-H. -L -L -E That's how you spell hallelujah. Oh. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. I think it is. You... Each individual um, user in here, you have to wait X amount of time. It's a built-in thing before you can post another chat command. So I'm like, that's how you spell it.
Somebody else can post it if they want. It's a Twitch thing. Going to need to sit back and drape it as you get further. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be hot and warm in here. And my room's upstairs. And it's hot to begin with. What? Oh, that's not working. Wait, did you put too many L's in there? Bad audio quality. I need to find a new uh, clip of that. So, uh, what's everyone else working on? I've been... Uh, Doing some prep work for next week. You missed it. So many new chat commands this past week. Oh. Oh. Um. I think that was actually the first time we used Hallelujah. Was just now. In the Discord, there is a. Where is it at? Is it in announcements? I think it's an announcement. I gotta scroll back. Yeah. Scrappy blanket, something I don't really need to use my brain. Gotcha. In the announcements um channel on the Discord, you have to scroll back a ways. There's a list of the current chat commands. I'm gonna end up probably posting that maybe like once a week or whatever, even though I'm not updating new chat commands, but those are the ones that are currently, that we have. I thought that was probably the best place to post them, so anybody can, uh, can use them. Putting on pockets on a shawl wrap and looking for a new project. That shawl that she's working on, oh, I love it. It's just the feel of the yarn. It's very squishy and snuggly. He's been working on a lot of really cool things. Went through the button stash today and found the perfect vintage ones to use. Sweet. Yeah, she even made really nice looking buttonholes for her shawl. <laughs> but like I said, I've been working on stuff for... Granny week next week. A week from tomorrow is granny week. And you will be getting, like I said, a uh, stream every night. All, all month long, with the exception of granny week and the exception of Temperature Blanket Sundays, all of the stitches that I'm going to be demonstrating on stream, all of their names have to do with an animal of some type. I had a couple that I thought were interesting, and I realized, oh, they're animal names. I'm like, oh, okay. So I found a bunch that all have animal related names in in the uh the names of the stitch so i thought that would be a good theme with the exception of the last saturday of the month whatever day of the week 
whatever number date that is, the 29th. The 29th, we're going to do another um, stream of a couple different edge stitching. Because like the other month, we I showed some basic stitches. I'm going to do another stream of edges, edgings. Yes, the cat stitch will be done this month. Um, it's all in the schedule. I've already posted it here on Twitch on the channel. But I can I will name all of I'm gonna go through the list of animal of stitches that I'm gonna do. Whoops, I made a wrong stitch there. So we're gonna do the lark's foot stitch, the spider stitch. The crow's foot lattice stitch. And then next week is granny week. So that's all granny, granny related stitches. Following week, we will be doing the cat stitch, the peacock stitch, the caterpillar stripe stitch, the bird's foot spike stitch. And then on the 27th, Thursday the 27th, we will be doing the crocodile ripple stitch. Lark's foot will be Tuesday, so in two days. So, a whole bunch of different ones. They all look different from each other and... So I guess it's going to be Animal animal April. <laughs> Not having any special graphics for any of that. But um, a lot of stuff going on this month. In addition, well, the, a lark is a bird. I think it's the stitch is supposed to be similar to the foot of the bird, I, I guess. Yeah, a lark is a, a songbird. Um, in addition to all of that, the stuff for the stream, we've also got the, um, I could not find a houndstooth stitch. Houndstooth, the houndstooth pattern in fabric, that is a woven stitch, not a crochet stitch. I don't know if there is a houndstooth crochet, crochet stitch. But the traditional houndstooth pattern is woven. But we will also have the um, the end of the month, the uh, fiber festival, the first of the uh, festivals. So that's it's coming up shortly, along with this nice nicer weather that we're going to be getting, and hopefully it'll stick around. And then, of course, after I'm each stream, when I'm done, whatever is scheduled, I will be working on whatever project, the shawl at the moment, and when I get done that, I think there's one more shawl i got to make. Well, actually, two more shawls of the same pattern. So we'll be doing that for a while. Yeah, no more wind. I don't want to be knocked off stream. That was an inconvenience. And I still got a bunch of tails and ends to, well, that has to be trimmed. I got some tails that I've got to uh, weave in, which I haven't done that in a while. But I definitely will need to do it before this gets any, gets much lo uh, longer.
But it's so nice to see that yellow in there. It's just a pop of brightness. Surprised how fast it can move when the trees cracked and fell. <laughs> yep, your uh, adrenaline kicks in. And anybody who's joining, welcome. I'm the Crafty Cub. I'm working on my uh, 2023 temperature blanket. Project that's going to take all year to do. Check my count. Okay. After this row, which I'm nearing the end, I've got four rows of blue. So that's going to be kind of boring. Now in the yard of the house in back of us, the one that belonged to the daughter are the Merkles. Come on. My yarn got snagged. I hate it when it does that. Oh, and anybody who's watching, if you're uh, interested, I have a YouTube channel. The uh, link just popped up in the chat. I also have a Discord. It will be popping up here soon. It's, both of those are also linked in the About page on the channel. And can you hear a crackling loud? You have no idea where it's coming from. Everybody who is... Uh, enjoying the stream and if you want to tell your friends about it because I'm getting ready to reach a milestone I'm not doing anything special no big celebrations no big anything about it but I'm nine followers away to a hundred followers I remember how difficult it was, and I was trying to get 50. 
I'm already almost at a hundred. Okay. Now I gotta switch over to the blue. We'll be doing blue for quite a bit. Marin stream on a night, you don't have to work the next morning. <laughs> okay, well that's a possibility. I don't know what your definition of marathon is. I might have to start earlier in the evening instead of 8 o'clock. Okay. Actually, you know what? That might be that might be a good idea. Yes. Not on Granny Week, obviously. It's not going to happen there. Because I'm not going to be doing... Since I'm doing Go Till Dawn. You crazy. Sure, when you get more followers, you don't have to crochet them. True, true. Um, No, I have a perfect... I have a perfect idea. I'm not going to do a marathon stream during Granny Week. But if I achieve 100 followers, um, I will do a special stream. I don't know how long it'll be. I'll have to figure that out. But I will start an attempt, not necessarily finish, one of these other shawls that I'm making. I think that's what I'll do. Because I've got eight repeats on Clay Miko's shawl. I just started, just added the second ball. And I'm probably going to take about four, almost four balls. So I just started the second one. Um, True, the, yeah, the longer one would, I mean, will get me good. Would get more West Coast people. That is true. Um, so, I've gotten a good portion of Hirsch all done. But I think starting and trying to get most of the shawl done during a marathon would work. I'll have to figure out what day would be good. And hopefully by then I'll have to figure out this music thing. Another thing I gotta add to my list for this week. Got a lot of stuff I gotta prep for the stream this week. Bunch of samples and figure out the music. Every other Tuesday and Friday and every other Saturday, please. Oh, you want me to stream every other Tuesday and Friday and every other Saturday? I'm not doing a marathon on all those days. <laughs> oh, okay. So our schedules can sync up. Funny. Oh, either of those days. Got you. Hey, Nor Fairy, how are you?
I was just telling everybody that I'm nine followers away to a hundred followers. And we have just decided that when I reach a hundred followers, afterwards, I will pick a day to do a marathon stream. Yes, you don't want to miss a marathon because of work. Unless it's a call uh, due to having a prior engagement. Gotcha. So yeah, I'm at 91 so far. You run out of online projects. You've got oodles that sparkly stuff and four skeins of unforgettable in a different colorway. Maybe find another gorgeous shawl pack. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I've got a bunch of other pa uh, shawl patterns that I found that are that I that look interesting. Kapow. <laughs> Oh, if I'm going to do amigurumi, I need to practice that a little bit more offline because that, it, I think that's going to be tedious. No. Yeah, but the problem is the pattern for that is knit. And I've got three hamburgers. I'll have to find something to use that yarn for because I don't think I'm going to be able to make that a hamburger out of it. No, I can barely knit a straight, uh, a row. My I don't have circular knitting needles. And even if you have them, that's fine. I don't want them. Cause I'm a, yeah, because that would you have probably do in the round. Thanks, but no thanks. You'll knit. Okay, okay. You can knit the hamburger. All on you, not for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll find a project or something to to do on the marathon stream. But we haven't got there yet. Real close. Plan on doing research this week to find local charity to donate crochet blankets and quilts to. Anyone have suggestions? Hmm. Not. Not. A, not certain. It was what a box yarn is worth that much, even if you don't make the exact item. Couldn't pass it. True. Yes, the Linus project. I've heard about that.
Hospitals collect crochet baby blankets to give to parents of, of stillborns, yes. Oh, um, what's, I don't know her full s screen name. Sophie was in here last night. Sophie 2, can't remember her screen name. She was make, making, and I've seen them all over online, crochet, they were amigurumi, they were crocheted octopuses that the tentacles, it's like a spiral. And she was making a bunch and is going to donate them to the hospital where her daughter was born, especially for in the, the NICU units or the preemie units, where to help them so that the infants don't grab the wires of the equipment, they'll grab onto the spirals of the octopus because it's a tactile thing. But that's an amigurumi type thing. But yeah, hospitals will collect, certain ones will collect items like that. Now, obviously, they probably have rules or whatever um, for the um, material that it's made out of. Most likely, that's probably going to be have to be like acrylic, so it's easily cared for and it's non-allergenic, um, no matter where you donate it to. Check with whatever you've done, whatever you donate to, some organization don't accept certain fight. Yep. Or a blank if it's just too holy. Exactly. You're probably best off donating things that are made out of acrylic. Oh, they won't? Wow. Oh. I know a lot of, like, shelters will probably take them because they're easy to care for. Hospitals might be different. But, um, a lot of shelters, they, they're not going to want to, they're not going to worry about proper care, care for each type of fiber and Welcome back, Clean Makeup. We're, we're talking about trying to come up with like charities or places to donate crocheted items to. If you have any suggestions, Clay Miko. For babies, they won't do to putting it in their mouths. A uh, true. Yeah, you'd have to whatever each uh, organization, whatever their rules or guidelines would be. Hey lady. But they will care if you give them, but will they care if you give them fabrics that will pop apart easily? Most laces are like that. Will they care if you? Yeah, they're not going to want anything that's going to like open up and or fall apart or unravel or unlace. Yeah, they're not going to want that. Hey there, Seagam. Oh, that's okay if you were working. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> I 
have to. It's not the yay, it's the dun dun dun. Some won't take items for babies or toddlers if the holes are too big. Yeah, they don't mind it as much for animals, but they aren't going to want fancy stitches that can, can't give to anything more than maybe a senior cat. Yeah, you probably don't want anything... Uh, too intricate. And most likely, if you're making something for charity, it's going to be for warmth and comfort, not for aesthetics. I mean, yeah, it will look, can look decent, but mainly your goal would probably be for comfort, for practical uses. Tight stitches okay for animal shelters, yeah. Sitting here playing Minecraft for the past couple minutes. Nice. Let me guess, Seagam, you're playing Minecraft wrong. You can make dog jackets and give it to a dog and cat shelters. That would test your skills, Grammy, to make a ja uh, dog jacket or dog dog sweater. How did I know, Seagam? Because I know you. <laughs> okay, but that's the funny thing. I know we're, our, my chat is, my conversation's all over the place. But you can't play Minecraft the wrong way. There is no right or wrong way. Anyway, um... Where are we? Where are we? I don't remember the name of the organization, but for donating for service men and women, they all, all have to be certain colors. Another thing that would be good, and if you've got a lot of scrap yarn, not enough to do like a full blanket, now would be the time to make them. Make hats for the fall and winter. You can figure out how to make a pocket shawl wrap. Grammy can make me one. But yeah, like I said, if you've got small amounts of yarn, and if you've got like the the circular knitting looms, you could just work up a bunch of hats. And um, Walter, far, far too many article clothing for animals in my previous occupation. I think I'm going to make items for humans during my retirement. That's fine. Or also for the winter, scarves. And a lot of them don't really need to take up a lot of yarn. It's a good way to use up your scraps. And they can work up quick.
just looking up Christmas ideas. I think I'm going to make a Christmas blanket in your nemesis corner to corner. <laughs> you could do it. Snowman face coasters. Christmas 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 tree ornaments would be great. It would be easy. A lot of them are um, variations of a... Um, well, if you do flat ones, they're variations of a granny. I mean, they're not necessarily a square, but they're in a round or whatever. You could do different shapes. Um, Clay Miko, look into it. And that's something I might end up doing between now and whenever. Obviously not for April. But there are other types of corner-to-corner -corner stitches. They will still work up. You'll do diagonal blocks the same way, but the stitches are different. There is a granny corner-to-corner, -corner, and I think... No, we're not doing that next week. But there is a granny corner-to-corner. -corner. I have a link for that somewhere. And I know you, you kind of like the granny stitch. Oh, on um, the crochet crown? Somebody doesn't have all of her Christmas crap back in the attic yet, and you're planning. <laughs> shush, shush, shush. And you're planning next Christmas's projects, really? I'm not. I'm not planning Christmas projects. That's clean eco. That's not me. And again, um, the Christmas stuff is all in the spare room. It's just not put in the attic yet. It's all packed away and organized. It just needs to be, each tote and everything needs to be put into the attic. It's real simple. I just need to do it. And I, my excuse can't be I got to wait till it's warmed up because it has warmed up. Oh, the meme? Hold, hold up a second. Yeah, let me... um. He's killing demons on the Xbox. Well, you can send it whenever you, you need to, whenever you want, and then uh, let me know, and then I will switch over. And what I need to do is I need to come up with a... meme of the stream little sound or jingle or something, but I can't sing, so I ain't singing it. Okay, it's sent. Okay, give me a s one second. Pull out the loop and... Meme of the stream, sad green, even sadder green. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I don't I don't find yarn barf sad. I enjoy going through yarn barf. She's getting all creative with these memes. I like it. Clay Miko could oversee my Christmas organization skills. Okay. I don't need somebody to oversee it. I just need to put it in there. It's already organized. I'm just going to slide it into the attic. It's already organized. <laughs> okay, I, I'll i tell you what to type, Crojo, and we're going to let Crojo do it. Exclamation point, B-A-D-U-M, 
TSS. Exclamation point. Actually, I'll type it here. I'm not going to type it. I'm, I'll type. There we go. Okay, you did it. You did it. Okay. I keep forgetting there's a delay. I think they refer to that as like a rim shot on a um on the drums or the the snare drum or whatever they call it. I think that's what they call it. I could be wrong. Yeah, the drum and the cymbal, yeah. Or the um the hi hat. It's the symbol that stands on the, the stand thing. Or the whatever it's called. I don't know. Christmas in July. No, 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 no. We're not doing Christmas in July. Wait, 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 what? Somebody's Christmas crap isn't put away. Just have Christmas in July. No, no, I'm not lugging it back down the steps. No, it's already upstairs. It just needed to be slid into the to the closet. The attic. Yeah, I'm not lugging it down. I'm not lugging it down twice a year. <laughs> if that's the case, just keep it up year round. No. No. We're, we're not. Y'all can type it. I'm not saying it out loud. But it's not that one. We never had one of those. You had two other choices there, Corjo. Yeah, only one Christmas per year. I mean, you could type it in chat. That's fine. Nobody else is going to see the chat. Well, actually, no, it will be played back. But it's not offensive. You're just a confused Jew right now. <laughs> It's all good. I just have decorations that have been sitting in the spare room for a couple months now. That need to be just slid into the attic. I don't have to go up any steps, no ladders. It just needs to be done. And now that it's warmed up, I, uh, have no excuse. Getting near the end of this row, but then I got two more rows of this blue.
uh, when I go to these um, festivals coming up here in the end of the month and the beginning of May, if I get anything in either festival, I will be sure to uh, show it here on stream what I got. I'm excited for um Okay, I gotta flip all of this. Oh my... Whose idea was it to make a blanket this big? <laughs> okay... So how's everybody coming along with their projects they're working on at the moment? If you're working on a project. Thick of red? I'm sick of this navy blue. I'm going to be happy when the temperature isn't in the 50s anymore. <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta double check something. It's like a navy. Okay, wait a minute. Let me screen. One. Two. Wait, is this my last blue? Okay, the green was Sunday. That's Monday, Tuesday. What? This is my last blue. So the green was Sunday. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, this is my last blue. If I'm counting that right, it's difficult when they're all blend together. Okay, that was Thursday. That was Friday. Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this is Thursday. This is my last blue. Okay. Cool. I'm further along than I thought I was. I thought I had to do another row in addition to what I'm doing now. Yeah, this is a very dark blue. Yeah, there's no black in this blanket. But the camera does make it look black. I can understand that. Double check. Okay, one, two, three, two. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Now I'm I'm doubting myself again. Where's my my pointer? I use this as a as a pointer. So I have four rows of blue that I need. One. Two, two, three. Now I do have to do another row on top of this. One, two, 
for, yeah, I was wrong. So, after the row I'm on, I got one more row of blue. Confusing myself. Doesn't take much to confuse myself. Wait a minute. I think I missed a stitch. I've never had any Mr. Beast bars. Those who don't know, Mr. Beast is a YouTuber and he's got a line of uh, snacks. And is it a candy bar? Now I can't figure out where to put the stitch. Okay, there it is. The game and his candy bars. Wait a minute. And to frog out some of this because I'm not going into my the right the correct stitch. Thought you're eating a candy bar. I'm all confused now. Okay. I think I got yeah, I'm back on track. I only had a frog out like three stitches. Now I want a candy bar. Now I want, like, chocolate and peanut butter. Hey, uh, Fallen777, you crochet but never been able to get through a blanket. Yeah, it can be a, um, a daunting thing. I suggest... Start small, like a baby blanket or like a throw. This one here, I think is going to be a, I think it's going to be a queen size bed, queen size blanket. But I'm doing this. This is um temperature blanket, so I'm doing it throughout the entire year. So it's not as overwhelming all at once. Oh, and yes, welcome to the stream. I'm sorry. I should have said that. Thank you, Seagam. You have to do smaller projects, stuffed animals and such. Yeah, I've noticed there's a lot of people doing stuffed animals and amigurumi. I've never attempted that before. I've done hats and scarves and obviously blankets. I've gotten into doing shawls. And as you can probably see, popped in the chat, popping up in the chat periodically. I do have a YouTube channel and a Discord, and you're free to check those out. If you want to. I stream usually four nights a week. Mostly crochet items. I have done other stuff in the past, but it's primarily crochet or crochet related. And starting next week, next Monday, I'm doing six 
um, streams in a row. Actually, it's going to be a total of nine streams in a row. But starting next Monday, the 10th through the Saturday, the 15th, is our second granny week of the year. And I'm doing a stream every night. And that's all going to be based on granny stitches or square type stitches, anything that's related. Lots of fun things in store for next week. I'm excited. Not too many fellow crocheters, folks. There's a few of us. Um, yeah, there's a bunch that I've that I follow that all that will crochet. They also do other stuff too. I know, I know there's some that also knit and spin along with playing games here and there. I'm not even near the end of this row, and plus I got another, we've determined I got a whole other row after this. And then, two more rows after that. <laughs> but those last two rows are not blue. The last two rows, one will be green and one will be yellow. Yay for yellow. We want yellow because yellow means the temperature for my scale, and the scale is right here above me, means that the temperature was in the 70s here. Right now, when I'm working on blue, it was in the 50s. <laughs> yeah, I have heard that the past couple years, crocheting has had a renaissance. I mean, about 20 years ago, it was a little pop. It was somewhat popular for knitting and crocheting. But I think it's come back since then. Shout out to you for making a temperature blanket that looks... Oh, this is ba a lot of this is scrap. Some of this, like the yellow and some of the purple, I had to go and pur purchase. I'm this, this is all scrap. This is what I have left over. I had... The green, I had this dark blue, I think. Um, I've got a couple other colors that I've had. I want to get through my scraps. And I think it's also the stitch. I'm doing the linen or it's the moss stitch. Or here in the, in the stream, we have referred to this as the zipper stitch. Because it looks like the teeth of a zipper. Um, I like how the, the, the rows interlock with each other. So yeah, I didn't, I'm not really picking colors. I'm not planning it all out. If it's, I have it and it's blue, I'm going to use blue. So if I run out of this navy and I have to have blue in the future, whatever blue I have on hand, which I've got a lot of this navy. See, yeah, that's the only blue I've been using. Actually, no, the other blue I used here originally was a little bit more of a, I don't know what, call, what you would call that. It's more of a, not a royal blue, but more of a primary blue. I was talking with somebody about colors that did not get chosen with the forethought that sometimes the weather's going to put those colors next to each other. Yep. Um, I'm trying not to do too many pastels so like the blues and the purples i'm using are more on the darker side now this green i'm using that is green actually it's a lighter green so that will i have a lot of that that will be my contrast also with like there well there's one stripe of white and then the yellow is kind of light so i've got some that are more some colors that are lighter and some that are darker 
but uh main reason is to use a, a lot of my scraps. But yeah, like I said, I did have to buy some colors, like I was low on yellow and orange. But I've got plenty of blues. And a lot of this green. Did I do a... Yeah, I did do a chain there. Can never work. Sometimes I can never remember if I did a chain or not. Now, like uh, Clay Miko, she made one for the days that when she was pregnant with her daughter. She posted it in the Discord, and but she specifically selected shades, the colors that she would use, and it turned out gorgeous it they're bright there's a lot of pinks and corals and teals in it it reminds me of like almost like fruit punch kind of <laughs> that's kind of what it reminds me of But yeah, I don't really have a specific color palette, and I want mine to be a little more on the scrappy side. But surprisingly, so far, it's been working out. Yeah, the, the berry colors and the pinks, not the teal. The teal isn't fruit, fruit punch, but a lot of it is those colors. And it reminds me of Fruit Punch. <laughs> you should know me by now. Don't don't pay me any atten any attention. I'm just your host. Pay pay no attention. I was giving you a compliment. Fruit punch at the pool. Yeah, the blue, the teals would be fruit punch. All I hear, and she is the Kool-Aid man busting through the brick wall. Oh, yeah. Um, Honestly, I just feel like most of the time... Those blankets fall short in the color theory department, but you like this one. Oh, well, thank you. I like it too so far, but again, we're all, this is only like winter. I haven't gotten to the spring and the summer yet. <laughs> Might try a temperature blanket next year. I wonder what it would look like like if each color also had a specific stitch that would be cool the only thing is you'd have to keep in mind of your stitch not only width and height if they would all work together because some stitches are just one actual individual stitch like i'm doing this is a single, then a chain, then a single, then a chain. And I'm doing the singles in the chain space. That's the moss stitch. Um, if you do another stitch, sometimes that is multiple stitches or whatever. So it'd be like multiple doubles or whatever to make like a fan or a, or a berry or a bobble or whatever it is. You just have to make certain that they would all, the math would line up. You'd have to do a lot of planning out for that. And then also the height of the stitches. Because depending on how long you would want to do it. I'm doing mine for a year. This stitch is great for that. Because if you do taller stitches, your blanket's going to be super, super long. You can control the width because that's what you start with. But your other dimension, I didn't want this to be... 10 feet long, literally. 
So I had to do some, and, and I, I, you, I'm going to use a word. Us crocheters don't like the word, don't like doing it, but I had, I'm going to use the G word. I had to do a gauge. And normally if it's a blanket, I usually don't do a gauge because it's not really a fitted garment. But this, I knew I had to have X amount of rows. I wasn't going to... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I said that said that word. It wasn't like I was going to an X amount of inches or feet. I knew I had to have 365 rows. So I had to make that 365 rows fit into a specific yardage or however many feet. I don't think most people realize that when getting to this hobby, there's going to be math involved, yes. It's simple math, but there's going to be math. Unless it's free form. If you're doing free form crochet and you do whatever, you don't really have to worry about that. Or most blankets or like scarves, you don't really have to worry about gauge too much because it doesn't have to be exact. You want it rough. But this, this pattern, how are you planning to do Emma, Emma Gurumi if you refuse to do math? You're going to be frogging more. Yes, Emma Gurumi, Emma Gurumi, you are going to need to do math. I hate math with the passion, but I love crochet. But it's simple math. It's not like you're not doing trigonometry. <laughs> Okay, my last row of blue. Yeah, making math. M math? Wait, math chicken? What's math chicken? I've heard of yarn chicken. What's math chicken? Is that like the same thing? Oh, okay. Yarn chicken. Wait a minute. As someone with a degree that involved me in taking some high-level math, no, this is baby math. Yeah, this is definitely baby math. <laughs> Addition, subtraction, multiplication. So a little bit of division. This is like f fourth grade level math. That's what North Ferry just said to me out loud. <laughs> Good understanding of multiples. Yes. Understanding of multiples is great. Hey, Sophie. I was just, uh, um, I'd mentioned you earlier. They were talking about donating. Grammy was asking about good places to donate crocheted items, and I said that you were uh, making those octopuses to donate to the hospitals. Why do you hate Texas? Oh, are you safe? If you're on here, I hope hope that you're safe. Because if you're not safe, you shouldn't be watching me on Twitch. Way to turn under touchdown in Delaware. Ooh, I didn't hear about that. I know we had those storms and winds that came through here. Ohio, we never had them, but yeah, you're good. 
They like to put the sirens on just in case to give me bad, real, real bad anxiety. No, I totally understand that. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully everybody's going to be okay, wherever they are. And that's one thing I want to, anybody who's watching, if you're watching and you are having severe weather that is very dangerous, don't watch me. I'd rather you uh, take shelter and be safe than pop in here and watch me crochet. There's, that's more important. You'll be in Houston in May. I have a train in Ohio back in the 80s. He lost everything. I live in Minnesota. Tornado Stadium was across the street from my house. We didn't have them where I lived before. Scared. They know you know what out of me. Yeah. So there'll be the same thing here if um I'm under severe weather with the threat of tornadoes real close, I'm not going to be streaming, so <laughs> it ain't happening. So the same thing with wherever anyone is, safety is more important. Thanks for the follow. Thank you for the follow, uh, Folly Lynn. I guess I'm pronouncing your name correctly. So I'm up to 92 followers. So again, anybody who, uh, um, wasn't here earlier, I'm going to go three, we had three go off in the past day, but then go to a watch. Wow. Oh, Fallen. Okay, you have a good day. Glad that you uh, were able to pop in. And thank, and again, thank you for the follow. Um, Anybody who wasn't here earlier, we have decided that when I reach 100 followers, I'm at 92 now, I will plan a marathon stream. And I will probably start and attempt to finish one entire project in that stream. I don't know when it will be, and I don't know how long the stream will be. I still have to figure that out. But we will have that after I reach the 100, 100 follower mark. I'm at 92. <laughs> Getting there. All that was destroyed in the tornado was Annapolis over a year ago. Still hasn't been replaced or cleaned up yet. Yep. Actually, it's been a year and a half. That was the beginning of September of uh, 21, 2021. I think it was September 1st. Well, there were some businesses that were destroyed, and they the building is still boarded up. And the um, I know the one business had to relocate, and I don't know if they've opened up again. If in their new, I know they have a new location, but I don't know if they've actually opened up. Um. And it all has to do with insurance and the landlord and all of that. And the one place that was destroyed was our favorite um, Greek restaurant.
but that's the one that has found a new place. Again, I don't know if they've opened up for business yet, but I know they secured a new location. Some places have decided not to reopen, helping in Ellicott City with the floods. Yeah, Ellicott City uh, has flooded forever. Like, it's ge geographically of where it's located, it is a flood zone. Last row of the blue, and then I gotta do a green, and then the yellow. But if Sophie's still here, I'm glad you're safe. Hate it. That's like the one thing I hate the most. Cold with a th thunderstorm. I was sitting outside in my pajamas. Tornadoes, nah. Like, where's the nearest shelter? Yeah. I totally understand. Unfortunately, this is the time of year for tornadoes. Springtime is active season. Getting on night trying to calm. Exactly. Just do what you can. Hopefully, you won't have any in your area. My opinion, anyone wanting to own a business in Ellicott City is asking for trouble. The topography is the problem. The area is shaped like a funnel, and Old Town Ellicott City is at the bottom of the funnel, but they keep rebuilding. Exactly. Exactly. When I was 10, a tornado went through my dad's backyard in Florida. It was really small, but I stood on the porch and all as it picked up his shed and threw it into the neighbor's yard. He was pretty mad at me for not following his instructions get the in the door. In a doorway or a bathtub. Yeah, you should have. Okay. 
last of the blue for tonight. And where did my green go to? Oh, it's over here. Didn't realize how much damage they do at that point. Now I know better. Well, we've been a th yeah, it's true. You definitely are a thrill seeker. Uh, whoops. Get both loops and join my green. Mug. Now that I'm old, I hide it, run as far away as possible if I could. Okay. Now we can flip as we're on the green row. <sighs> we're reading patterns for the first time. It's horrifying, horrifyingly difficult. Are you reading written word patterns or a diagram? Saw a video of someone watching trying to go across their field in Iowa, and they were like, oh, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Some of them are so used to it, they're almost immune. Written, it's like reading music. Yeah, some of the patterns, when they're written, I, I'm learning how to read the diagrams, but the written ones, sometimes you have to depending on how complicated they are, sit there and just like rock your wrap your brain around them. Like, oh, oh, like, what are they trying to say? But yeah, it is kind of like reading music. But they are a lot better. The written patterns are a lot better than they used to be like over a hundred years ago. I've seen some YouTube videos of vintage patterns, and there is no standardization. And the terms they use could be completely different from someone else's pattern, but also completely different from one of their other patterns, but then also in the same exact pattern, they want the same thing, but they're using different terminology, and it, I don't understand how they could figure out what they were going to make, and a lot of the times... Those old vintage patterns in the 1800s had no pictures. So you didn't even know what it was supposed to look like. Um, what, five years ago, on my drive out to Minnesota, I was hoping to catch a glimpse of tornado off of the distance to no such luck. I saw a lot of corn. Written patterns are fine. The, dirt. the diagrams are like, what? <laughs> you prefer diagrams? Should show you the stuff inside those books I recently got. Some written patterns are more difficult than others. If they come with a video, it's really helpful for me. I was looking at them over the weekend, and oh my gosh. Yep, that's another thing. Um, the um, Depending on the author, they not, might not be good at writing patterns. I'm starting to um, be okay reading the, the diagrams. Because the one I did the other week, the aligned double clusters, what I did Thursday, I couldn't get the, reading the, the written. I was like, what are they talking about? I looked at the diagram, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And it was a simple pattern, it was a simple stitch. But 
That's why we have both. Because some people are better at the written pattern than the diagram. And vice versa. And then like Grammy said, if it comes with a, if there's a video, then you can get more of an idea of seeing it actually being done. And that's also why I'm hoping that when I show how to do these stitches, then it'll make it clear for anybody who's is either crocheting along or watching it back to understand how the stitches are made. Brand new to knitting, there are diagrams for knitting or just written patterns. I'm not certain. I tend to use a video first, and at this point, I'm wildly confused because this is a pattern for 2009, and the author was not very clear about sizing. That's a, a perfect example of a pattern that's not written real well. Even though it's a modern pattern, doesn't mean that it's a good pat. That's a good written pattern. And some patterns are found originally in a different language and, and did not translate well into English. And even if they are translated into English, I should take that back. If they are written by a UK designer, their terms for stitches are different than ours. What we call a single crochet in the UK, they call a double crochet. So, there, even within the same language, there's differences. So, I'm, I'm looking at a knit pattern at the moment, but it's written and it's making my brain soup. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I've seen knit patterns, but I don't know if I've ever seen a knit pattern with a diagram, which I'm assuming they're, they're, they have them. You would think so because knitting is much older than crochet and also there are machines to make it. So they would have some type of, in the early days, some way of devising a pattern or whatever in a diagram to even set up the machine. My goal, understand the pattern and then rewrite it to the point where I understand, exactly, rewrite it to where you understand it. So math is not the hard part. Deciphering the instructions is, yep. Actually, that's what it is when I do stitch the, um, when I teach a stitch here on stream, either from the book I have, or if I find it online, I'll have the written pattern, but I have to go and read it and try to understand, and then I rewrite it most times so I can interpret it and teach it. You can read a 10 page biology paper in legalese and it's easier than this. <laughs> I mean, first, you have to, um, oh, I got a, a knot here. Okay, I got to do a little, a join in the middle here. Actually, I'm going to do a weaver's knot, because I'm liking the weaver's knot right now. So we'll end up doing a weaver's knot instead of a crochet join. But when I'm teaching a stitch here on stream, I have to decipher it in a way that I can understand it. I don't think the pattern writers understand how complex they make these patterns. 
yes, but depending on the complexity of the stitch to begin with, they have to have some way to describe it in written form or in diagram form so the you so the crafter can the knitter or the crocheter can actually make it and again some some designers are a lot better than others Like, for instance, the shawl, the fluffy meringue shawl. The pattern's written very well. But I don't think I would have been able to understand how to do it if I hadn't seen the Crochet Crowd's video first. The same with sewing patterns. Wrapping brain around words is not always easy. Yep. And actually, the opposite I don't like is if I find a video somewhere, either YouTube or wherever, and they're just crocheting, and there's no written pattern, and they're not telling you how to do it, or if they are, it's in a different language, and I want to learn how to do it, it's like, um, oh, okay, like, I could slow down the video frame by frame and try to figure out what they're doing and write it down. But that's it's very inconvenient. Lots of rewinding a YouTube video, or if you're ambi ambitious, Instagram video. Yep. I mean, I can understand if it's in a different language, them on camera as they're doing it, explaining what they're doing in their language. I understand that. Okay, not everybody speaks English. I get that. But a lot of them are just doing it for kind of like what I'm doing here. But if you're watching me live, I can obviously. Madame Tess. <laughs> I can obviously um, explain what I'm doing. But if there's just videos of them just crocheting and people are interested, it's like, um, don't give a little more instruction. Oh, you were doing the badum test to, uh, why you, why you let me teach you. <laughs> no, I'm happy to, uh, teach these stitches. Whatever stitch that I'm uh, doing that evening. YouTube video is different. Like, put something in the description. Yeah, true. And even if it's in a different language, there are ways to translate it from language to language. They don't even have to have English subtitles on the screen. Even if it's written, it could be deciphered. But a lot of them, not, not a lot, but I think some of them are doing it not really to, 
Well, maybe some of them are doing it to teach a stitch just by showing, which really isn't teaching, it's just showing. And then I think a lot of them, it's like that ASMR type thing. It's like a relaxing, mesmerizing thing to watch. And they're not doing it to teach a stitch. It's just to be like, look, look at this pretty thing that I'm doing. But if you're a crocheter and watching it, you're there's a good chance a crochet is going to want to try to replicate it. If it's just somebody browsing and like, oh, that's cool looking and it's mesmerizing and then they move on and they don't crochet, I get that. But it's your little one into Sesame Street came across the cutest crochet. I saw that pattern too for the Yip Yips. Yes, that is cute. She isn't anymore. Now she's into the number blocks. Wait. Is that like a... Is the number blocks like a, like a cartoon? Or is it just actually like wooden blocks with numbers on them? Like old school, like I had when I was a kid. Okay, I need to take a little break and get something to drink. You can count on us. We're the number blocks. Never heard of that. Ow. My knee just... Oh, it's British math show. Gotcha. Or in Britain, in, in the UK... They don't call it math. They call it maths. It's plural. They don't go to math class. They go to maths class. Which I don't understand. Uh, is Grammy still here? I'm paying attention. It only took me 30 minutes of looking at this pattern to figure out how many stitches I need to cast on. <laughs> They also have the alpha blocks that teach you to read. Oh, that's cool. So if Grammy's still here, my last row I'm working on this color here. So we're putting the green away. Now we're joining the yellow. <laughs> Thanks for the rain. Oh! Thank you, uh, Dalria, Del for the raid. As, um, I got the hallelujah from, uh, Switching over to yellow. Well, actually, okay, to clear that up, the raid call was thanks for the raid. The hallelujah is a text chat command. <laughs> they just happen to be done at the same time. <laughs> that was a total coincidence. Yes, and again, everybody who's coming in on that raid, welcome. I'm cro I'm the crochet I'm the crochet I'm the crafty cub. Every time I get raided, I get tongue tied. Feel like you have to switch it to yeah. I might have to switch that sound to that. Thanks for the follow. Uh, thank you for the follow, Jay's Nets. 
Take the praise and pretend it's mine. Yes. Yes, the praise is yours. <laughs> um, I'm working on a temperature blanket for this year. And I started January 1st. And I am now doing yesterday's. This is yesterday's color. And where I live, my temperature range is, is right here above me. And yesterday it was in the 70s, so it's warming up. And um, we're saying hallelujah because it was 75 yesterday, where all week it was in the mid-50s and a couple days in the upper 60s. So uh, we're happy to have yellow in here. That means nicer, warmer spring weather. Oh, you must be in the south somewhere or in the southern hemisphere. Well, you wouldn't be using Fahrenheit. Florida, gotcha. Crojo, it didn't actually do that because there is like a five minute cooldown between commands for each command. It's to prevent spanning. As I said it for five minutes, I think. So people aren't just spamming my chat and you just hear nothing but sounds. You'll be able to do other um, commands, but for that command, nobody can do that one for a few minutes. I can change it to whatever I want. I think I've got them all set for five minutes. I can always go back and adjust them if I need to. But anybody who came in that raid, welcome. Um, I stream four nights a week, mostly crochet. Um, I'm doing, like I said, a, te a temperature blanket all year long. I also have a YouTube channel and a Discord. They are will pop up in the chat, and they are also on. The links are on my about page of my stream. And if you like what you see here, next week starting, well, all next week I'm going to do, there'll be nine streams in a row, nine nights, nine nights in a row, I should say. But I do the temperature blanket usually every Sunday. But on Monday the 10th through Saturday the 15th, we are having our second granny week of the year. They're all going to be granny related stitches, either granny square adjacent or types of granny squares or granny square adjacent types patterns. And there's going to be some fun going on there. This is my first temperature project I've ever done and I decided let's do a blanket all year long. And it's going to be a queen size blanket. And this is about and I let me see if I can, yeah, I can zoom out a little bit. Well, you can probably see it, me here, not not this, but me. You can kind of see the width of it. That's about a quarter of the width, because that's, that's three months worth. And if anybody's interested, I am doing the moss stitch or the linen stitch, or what we like to call here the zipper stitch. And it's basically, it's a single crochet chain and then a single crochet. And you do the single crochets in the chain spaces of the previous row. That's all that this is. So the rows kind of interlock with each other. Oh my God, for his marathon, we should do a meme every hour. We could do that. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a linen stitch. It's a very fast stitch. Yeah, it's really easy to do, and I like it how each row, like you can really see here between the blue, that's like a dark blue and the green, they lock together. That's why we call it the zipper stitch here in the stream, because it looks like the teeth of a zipper. And I also chose this stitch. I got the idea from a YouTube channel called The Secret Yarnery, and... 
I like it because of the stitch height, height of the rows. I didn't want my blanket to be super long because it's going to be 365 rows because each row, each day is one row in my blanket. So I wanted something that was going to be a realistic size blanket. Looks really nice, even in solid color. Working chain spaces is nice and comfy. <coughs> exactly. You don't really got to put too much thought in it. It's just real quick and basic. Just finished nine bobbins. So I was lurking to fix up. What did I miss? What type of bobbins were you doing? Oh, thank you for the... the welcome, uh... Flarm... Alarm. I can't pronounce some of these usernames for the uh, late raid. That's fine. Oh, yes. Thank you, Crojo. Um, I keep forgetting. There's so much going on. I'm all flustered. Once a stream, Crojo Mojo is the meme contributor to the stream. She will send me a meme, and we will have a little break. We've already done it for tonight, and I can show it again. And Actually, well, that's not really going to... You have to have a little bit of reference, but anyway. Um, we try to post a crochet or yarn or craft-related meme every night. Crochet in autumn colors. I knit and crochet as a small business for yourself. Nice. Very nice. Oh, I can show a different meme. Let me pull up. I'm going to go into the Discord. Okay, this is a good one. Open in browser. Let's move this over here. Been working all night on autumn stock. So, yeah. Yeah, you got to build up your stock. Oh, that's... Okay, I got to open up in a different... I got to open the file where I keep all of my memes that are shared because it doesn't work in the other thing. Did I put them in here? Why is that small? Oh, I could, I could zoom it in. It's very blurry when I zoom it in. So, it took nine bobbins. Hunting at nine bobbins took an hour and a half. So when you mean bobbins, are you are you spinning? Are you why are you prepping it for a uh, a project? Are you like making them into like yarn balls or yarn cakes? Is that what you what you mean by bobbins? Hair bobbins, but. I'm not, I'm not certain if I know what that, what that is. If you've got a, um, a link, you could, if you have like a, a link to a picture of one, you could post it here in the, uh, in the chat. If you got a link. So I'm going to show the meme. One of the previous memes that, uh, oh, 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 like a scrunchie. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Okay, I understand. I didn't didn't know it was called a bobbin. Need a group style opinion. If I add two and a half inches of a two by two rib stitch on the sleeves, would that mean I should add an extra inch for the waist of the sweater? I'm not. Not really certain. Okay, I'm going to show the meme, one of our previous memes. So, one that was used the other other day, the other week. When you use up your, use up or remove yarn from your craft stash, it's called neutering because you got rid of your balls. So, that's an example of one of our, uh, our memes that we have every evening. So, they're all kind of, uh, 
related. Hi there, Nokia of Azeroth. I think I've been to your stream before. That name sounds familiar. Okay, like two and a half inches on the sleeves and three and a half on the waist. Grammy, what is your opinion on that, on Lady's question? For the ribbing, I'm assuming like the cuffs and the hem of... Yeah, Nokia of Azure, I think I might have, at one time, the other week or whatever, maybe have rated your stream when I was done. It was a possibility, but I definitely remember that your username. It doesn't necessarily matter, but if you want to look look even, then, it would tr then you would try. Yeah, I'm not really certain. Um, and that's not something you could do, and then if it, if you don't like it, frog it out, because it's the rib stitch. Hmm. The sleeves and the waist of the sweater are two different styles. There's a braid on the sleeves that goes all the way down to the cuffs. It's completely plain on the front and back of the waist. Hmm. Yeah, I think, she, think she's talking about the ribbing. Like, if this is the end of the sweater, to be have the, at the waist, at the hem of it, to be wider than it is on the sleeves. I think that's what she's asking. I'm adding the rib stitch because the hems are entirely unfinished on the pattern. So yeah, this is my last row of the night. And when I get done this row, I think I'm going to switch over to the shawl. We might have a little bit longer of a stream tonight because I don't feel like ending. And since I just got that raid, I don't, I want to stick around a little while. Yeah, if you want Lady1241, um, send a uh, picture in the uh, Discord. We can get an idea. Good to know. I think I'll end up making the waist first anyway, and then eventually the sleeves will end up towards the end. It should be workable. Oh, you posted the pattern. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you're not actually, you haven't gotten there yet. You're still working on it. Duh. Um... I love how the chart for temperature blanket is rainbow colors, making a class, making a dress with trans flag as the body and rainbow flag for the skirt. Nice. I chose these because I'm trying to get rid of my stash. And 
I figured, and the temperature range here is pretty wide. It can go anywhere from the single digits all the way to a little over 100 degrees. So I wanted to keep my range somewhat simple, and I didn't want into like I didn't want like specific shades of each color. So if in my stash, if I have red yarn, whatever red it is, it's going to be 90 degrees. So if I use one ball of it and it's done and I have more days that are 90 degrees, I'll grab the next red ball, even if it's a different shade. That's happened here with this purple. Like I've got this grape per, uh, color and then I've got this like raspberry color. To me, that's purple. It's like a pinkish purple, but to me, that's purple. So... Anything time that it's any of the any shades that are purple, that means it was in the 40s. Hey, Gold Misfit. Welcome back. I might end up reaching my uh, goal of a hundred followers tonight. I've got 93 already. Again, anybody who's joining who hadn't heard, when I reach a hundred followers, a day to be determined in the near future, I will be doing a marathon stream. And I don't know how long that marathon stream will be. We just kind of came up with it this evening. Um, and I think I will be picking a project that I'm going to start an attempt to finish all in one stream. I don't know if that's going to be feasible. We'll give it a try. Also, anybody who's just joining, um, I think I mentioned it already about next week being Granny Week, but then any of the other stitches that I teach and show how to do here on the stream in the month of April, excluding temperature blanket and excluding granny week, they will be stitches named after or having the name of an animal in them. That's just what I kind of decided. Depending on what it is, I have done full Amy's on stream from start to finish before. I've never done Amigurumi before. I don't know if that's something that I would want to do the first time doing it on stream because I'm not that familiar with it. I would need something that I'm somewhat a little more familiar with. I'm thinking about a shawl, but maybe a different pattern than the one I have been working on because I'm now currently on the third shawl of the exact same pattern. So I think it would be time to switch it up. Love Amigurumi. There's so many cute toy patterns. Yeah, I've... Haven't... I don't know if, it, if, it, if I haven't been brave enough to try it. I just... It's not something I've attempted. I mean, it doesn't intimidate me, but it's... Possibly for the future. I mostly do amigurumi. I have no use for shawls, honestly. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, I personally don't have use for shawls. I like making them. I mean, the one I'm, I'm working on is my third one that I've ever made, and it's the exact same pattern. I've never made another pattern before. And they're all going to be given away to family and friends. But uh, I enjoy the stitch pattern, at least on this one that I have. Which we're getting close to the end. I want to get goosebumps enough to make my own sweater. <laughs> Oh, you meant, you, wait, you want to get so good. Is that what you meant? Was that an audio correct thing? Okay. Because I'm like, you want to get goosebumps? None of my family likes them, and it has no 
no real life friends. Aw, that can't be true. Jack Skellington, that'd be cute. He's watching your stream from yesterday. I want to try to find that broomstick stitch now. I'm also in the market for hairpin lace loom. I'm a bad influence. Actually, actually, no. Clay Miko. That is not going to break the bank. The hairpin lace loom from the other week, this was about $10. Okay. And then from last night when we did broomstick lace, do you have a mop or a broom in the house? This here is the leg off of one of those cheap tables that you just screw the legs into the bottom, like the little side little end tables thing that you put like a tablecloth on that goes to the floor. That's all this is. It's just a wooden dowel. So if you got a broom or a mop or anything like that. So that cost me nothing. <laughs> so, and you already have the yarn and the crochet hook. All your friends live on the internet. Oh, I'm sorry. Last couple stitches of the blanket. Handle the kitchen utensil as long as... Okay, that would work as long as it was uniformly cylindrical. And if it was as long enough as she wants her project to be wide. Which, if you're going to make even a, a scarf, that's going to be, let's say eight, nine inches wide, the handle may or may not but be that long, I mean, that's possible, but it would need to be completely round for the most part. I mean, it can have, doesn't have to be, you want it, to, you don't want it to be like, you know, a lot of handles are narrow at one end and then they get thicker. You probably wouldn't want that. Or you can go to the hardware store or even the craft store and get a wooden dowel. Or if you've got um, kids' toy that would work. Or if you've got a one of those... Um, yes, you could use the tubing. Now, you're going to want it somewhat thick. The diameter, or the circumference, the diameter actually, of the dowel is going to determine, and I have my sample from last night, will determine the size of the hole in your broomstick lace. This is what we were, talk were talking about. I did this last night. So if you have a smaller um, dowel or rod, it's going to make a smaller hole here. Plunger handle, yes. That's I thought. The cheap ones, those are just wooden dowels. Um, yeah, you could find whatever you got. Just if it's too too narrow, your holes are going to be smaller, which is fine. You can still do the technique. You could even probably do do it with a um, somewhat chunky knitting needle or crochet hook. Okay, so that, and we're going to end, that's the end of the temperature blanket for tonight. So we added seven more rows, and we get, get this nice yellow in there. So we can put that to the side. Don't go, everybody, because there's still more of the stream. We are doing the shawl. And I worked on some of this shawl. Last night off of off stream. 
Yes, the temperature blanket is a good visual how weird the weather can be. You can apply wherever you are. Okay, I'm zoomed out as far as possible. So, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight repeats so far on this. And I just added the second ball. And I'm probably going to use almost four balls. So, and this is, again, this is the um, fluffy meringue shawl pattern by the Crochet Crowd on YouTube. It's a free pattern. And I have posted it in the Discord, or if you go on to the Crochet Crowd's channel and look up Fluffy Meringue Shawl, it is posted on there. They have a, how many yards is one ball? One ball is 279 yards. Um, and this is a size four worsted weight yarn, but it's a very thin size four. But there's a free pattern. He explains how to do it. I would recommend watching that his video because there's some tips and pointers. And then either follow along, and then there's also a written pattern. There's no diagram that I could find for it. It's all written. But, uh, yeah, this is a little over one ball. But each time you add... Your repeats, you're, in, you're adding on either side, you're adding one of these fans, one of these scallop clusters. So it, it, it takes up a lot of yarn. Again, I can't um, teach and demonstrate how to make this because I don't have the permission from the pattern designer. But it's a free pattern. And if you like it and you want to try a shawl and want to test your crochet skills, I recommend it. Oh, and I'm using, for those who haven't seen this before, haven't seen my channel, I am using Facets, which is a Loops and Threads line of yarn from Michaels. And this is in the color Summer Sunrise. And it's a roving type yarn, meaning it doesn't have a lot of twist. And it's very soft and fluffy. There's a little bit of a halo to it. It is comparable to Red Heart's Unforgettable, which I've made. Um, and I'll show that. I've shown it so many times on stream. I've made two of these. It's the exact same pattern, but it's a different colorway and technically a different line of yarn. That's the first one. I made two identical of this. And this, this used about, not quite, roughly it was about three and two-thirds of balls of yarn. So not quite four, four balls. Okay. So, we're going to see... how long it's going to take me to mess up and have to frog <laughs> because I, that happened last night. I had my first mistake last night and I had to rip out almost three rows. Let's hope that that does not happen tonight. Yep. I was doing so good. And what it was is I forgot a chain segment. There's part of it, and parts of it, there you have to do like segments of three chains, like what it just did now. I forgot one of those. And then when I got to, pre to subsequent rows, it affected, it was like, oh crap. This yarn is not the best to frog. Because it will uh, snag on itself because of that halo feature.
how's everyone's projects coming along that they're working on if you are working on something I know a bunch of you were and I asked that a little while ago but I'm just checking in every time that bot posts the links to either the YouTube or the Discord I'm thinking somebody is uh typing in here I'm like I gotta read it <laughs> I had to take a break. One of my fingers went numb from holding the hook too tight. Yeah, that happens. Hey there, Snoopy Skellingtons. Skellingtons. Yeah. Steady and productive is good. I mean, deciphering this pattern is going okay. I was initially planning on working on one of my blankets, but I left those downstairs. Oh, um... I can't pronounce your name. I can't. I'm having a hard time pronouncing people's names. Um, Arima Mary, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm working on a cell phone pouch for my aunt's birthday whenever I have downtime. Nice. That reminds me. Okay, this is showing my age. Just got back to where I was an hour ago after having to frog two rows due to missing first stitch two rows ago. Uh-oh. That's not good. So you, you said you're making a cell phone pouch. So, back in the day, and we're talking 2006, um... Smartphones weren't, were just becoming a thing. And I had a iPod Classic. And I used to walk to work. And it took me about an hour or so to walk to work. It was a couple miles, and I walked kind of slow. Um, and I would listen to my music on the way to work. Well, in the winter time, it would be in my coat pocket. I had like a suede coat and had an inside pocket, like inside. And then um, the chest area. And it would sit in there. And I noticed in the winter time, over however many, however long it would take, it would just shut off. It would get cold, and it, I couldn't turn it on. And then once I got to work, I'd be inside, and then on the way home, it'd be fine, because it had, guess, thawed out. So, I made a simple little sleeve for my iPod to keep it warm, and it worked great. Snoopy Skellington says, I finished a crochet project earlier. I put quotations because I called it done after giving up on fixing a key part of it. It works just fine without that part. I gave up on. It would look nicer with it. Ah, uh, yeah, I know how that is. Sometimes, uh, and we were talking about this earlier, either a pattern or if you can't figure out how to physically do the stitch or combination of stitches, it could be frustrating. Sometimes when that happens to me, if it's something that doesn't have to be finished in a certain time frame, I'll just put it to the side for a few days and then come back at it and then maybe it'll make sense. Stitch didn't want to follow through with this yarn.
like MC for me, and corner to corner for Claymico, MC, MC. It's it's too much work. I'm done finishing it of the project. Yeah. Oh, magic circle. Duh. Magic circle. Gotcha. Magic ring, yeah. And it took me a while to figure out how to do the magic circle. And then it, over time, eventually it clicked and got it. Okay. Ring circles of despise them both. <laughs> well, that's not true. Because you've got the hang of doing a granny square with a chain ring where you chain about six of them and then join to the very first chain you made to make a ring and then stitch into it. You got the hang of that. the magic ring well my yarn doesn't bust when I pull it yeah you hopefully you'll have some strong enough yarn that won't rip okay might have to frog two rows only I have one too many stitches um is it a pattern where it wouldn't matter if you didn't have that one extra stitch or does it is it a complex pattern, like a pattern here, like what I'm doing? It's complex where I have to frog it. But if it's a simple pattern, you might get away with not doing that extra stitch. You don't do magic crojo, okay. So you're not in, you're not going to be going to Hogwarts. Gotcha. I guess not, but it's going to bug me if it doesn't add up. Yeah, I'm kind of like that too sometimes, that if it isn't perfect. But, and, I, and I've, I saw this years ago, but I just recently saw it the other week. There is a saying, and I think it's in... The Navajo culture, I think, that when they're weaving, they're doing their weaving, like blankets or whatever, they purposely put in a mistake here and there because they say, and they call it the creator, they say that only the creator is perfect. So sometimes, I don't know if it helps, just kind of let the mistake be in there. If that's something that uh, you'd be able to do. 60 single crochets in the round. And I have it separated by 10s with stitch marker. My last row ended up being 11. Hmm. Okay, so you're doing single crochets in the round. So it's just all single crochets. You can easily just make it 10 and then continue on. Being, yeah, you'll know it's slightly off. But if that is what the pattern needs to be, instead of frogging all of that, if it's not going to affect, because again, if it's just since if it's just single crochets in the round and it's not that intricate, 
that in one little stitch. And it's the same thing if you were having the opposite. If you ended up having one less, you could always add increase, just add an extra stitch in there. Same thing in Amish quilts. They said that only God can make anything perfect. Exactly. Wait, was that? Gotta see if that was what I was supposed to do there. I've heard of an old wives' tale that if you finish a project with no mistakes or frogs, then you've trapped your soul into the piece and it becomes cursed. I laugh to myself thinking about whatever I make a mistake and I have to frog. <laughs> hey, that's a good, uh. Again, I don't. And I understand it's an old wives' tale, but um, I kind of like that. There. Almost done this one row. Then I got three more to finish the repeat. So glad that the temperature blanket is caught up. Because last week I was not in the mood to do it, but I hope do that one stitch all over again. Good thing I make a mistake in every piece I make. My souls are dark enough. We don't need any curses added to that. <laughs> That's funny. And you know what would be funny? Is, Clay Miko, if you were doing the Lost Souls crochet pattern, or shawl pattern, there is a, a you've probably seen it. It's a shawl, and the stitch work, they look like skulls. And it's called the Lost Souls. Yeah. That if you did it perfectly, you'd have your dark soul in that in the Lost Souls shawl. <laughs> A lot of chains. I've never made it before, but uh, it's very common. Want a shawl and lounge pants. Okay, you've probably seen it. There, somebody was had made pants, but it was like, it was like, I'm assuming it was a worst of weight yarn. And it was done like that. And it, it looked like it was very hot and warm. You didn't mess up. Thank God, one of your stitch markers was, see? That, at least you didn't have to frog it, you, you just had to move your stitch marker. So, it worked out for you in the end. Triple check before I frog anything, yes. We have a uh, a frogging that was averted.
and I'm getting to the end of this row. That one's done now, I can flip. the thing. I gotta pay attention to this because this is where I made the mistake the other time. Be headed off to bed for now. Good night. Okay, good night, Clean Miko. Get some rest. I do three? No, I didn't do three. I only did two. Damn. I think I'm going to work on a cross stitch piece that I haven't worked on in a while. I haven't done cross stitch, I don't know how many years. Decided enough of this pattern to get myself to the arms. That's going to take me a while, so I'm good for now. That's, yeah, break it up in sections. Kind of like pace yourself. Please. Didn't follow through all the way with that stitch. Taking out one or two stitches is not does not constitute a frog. <laughs> That's a tadpole. Does not count. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Where am I? Hold on a second. Oh, okay. I'm like, I thought that was the the mid the midpoint, but the midpoint's there. I'm. I'm off by a little bit. Not. Wait a minute. Oh no. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. We'll make it work. 
I did too many chains where I should have done one chain. We're going to make it work. See, that's a mistake we're going to leave in. We're going to leave that mistake in. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's not going to that's not going to cause any issues. That's fine. There's like two extra chains. Wait. I had to take up the frog on standby. <laughs> You're going to talk clean Miko. You can tell her all you want. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Leaving mistakes and working around them is a good thing for the mind. Yeah. It's just two chains. It's not like it's a big, huge stitch. They're, they're chains. They're tiny. Okay. I'm going to double check this half of the row. Three. There's three there. Okay. Oh. Okay, I am going to take out two stitches because I forgot the one thing to do. Okay, it's just two stitches. Forgot to do these loopy things. Now, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's fine. That works. No frogging involved. I can see what I'm doing. No frog frogs were harmed in the construction of this saw. <laughs> yes. We had one little tadpole. And to tell you the truth on all these shawls that I've made, technically, there's mistakes. Well, not really mistakes. I've kind of changed the pattern up slightly. Because here, where I've got this, they want me to do stitches into the stitch here. I do it in the stitch space. So it's a slight variation. Technically, I guess you can say that's a mistake. I'm not following the pattern perfectly, but got a crash because my brain is melted. There's a melted stick of butter. Oh, butter sounds good. Yeah, when I get to the end of this row here, um, I think we're going to and we might raid somebody. You should post a disclaimer. I'm very sure everyone that you are an amphibian-friendly streamer. <laughs> okay, lady. I will chat with you later. I'm glad that you were able to stop on by. Again, I will be on again Tuesday evening. And we're doing the Lark's Foot Stitch.
or about mistakes if they're not mistakes if they are intended. Okay. Then I intended those two extra chains on that one area. Uh, last little section. Okay, now we're going to see if I did the second half correctly. Two, three. Yep, we did it correctly. Let's put our stitch marker in our loop. That over there. And I'm going to attempt to see if there's anybody that we could raid. If not, then we won't. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. We are going to raid... That's not what we're going to do. We raided her, I think, the other day. We're going to raid Heather Bizzo. I think she was I think she was the one that was... Um, Thanks for the follow. Oh, thank you for the follow, Snoopy Skellingtons. She was the one I think was um, crocheting with mittens on for a little bit. So we're going to go raid her real quick. Um, everybody, thank you for joining tonight. It's pretty deep, pretty success, successful stream. Um, I'll be on again Tuesday night for the Lark's Foot Stitch. And uh, everybody have a good evening. We're going to go raid and everybody happy crafting. And give us about eight seconds and we will pop on over. <laughs>